Good morning, readers. I am Mrs. Scott, and I am here to read aloud to you. And I get to know you better this summer. We are going to spend some time this summer reading the book Runt. What do you think a runt is? And do you think being called a runt makes you feel good inside or makes you feel yucky inside? So we're going to start reading this book, and by the end of our read aloud today, we're going to come up with what we think runt means, and if we think it's a nice thing to call someone, or if it's something that might make someone feel yucky. Chapter 1. Spring comes late to the forest of northern Minnesota. Geese soar in from the south, only to stand flat-footed on frozen lakes complaining loudly to one another. Can you picture that in your brain? The geese with their cold feet squawking and complaining about being cold. Bears, groggy and cross, emerge to the world still cloaked in snow. Deer search in vain for tender shoots. Yet the wolf pups pushing their way into the world found their den warm and dry and welcoming. Their silver mother greeted them one by one, drying wet fur with her tongue and massaging breath into each tiny body. And though their eyes were sealed, their ears folded tightly against their heads, she could guess already what place each would take in the pack. Leader, she named the first brown pup, a vigorous male, the second a female, she called Sniffer, and she gave Sniffer's twitching nose an extra lick. Another female arrived, with spindly legs already in motion. Runner, Silver said, you will be swift and sure-footed, and the pack will need you. Then she drew the pup toward her nurturing body. The fourth emerged with his brow furrowed. Like that. And you have furrowed brows. Thinker, his mother said fondly, licking his forehead smooth. You will always be watching and planning, won't you? The den, dug into a hill above the frozen lake, angled downward from the entrance for six feet, then made a 90-degree turn and rose for another six feet. The pup's father came, a large black wolf with white with a white star on his chest, had been laying had been laying at the turn of the narrow tunnel, listening, waiting, as each pup emerged, his tail wagged fiercely. When the fourth pup had settled at the mother's side, King backed rapidly toward the surface. Four pups, he told the others, waiting there. Four healthy pups, each one of them big and strong. Then he danced, leaping and whirling for the joy of the new world that had come to the pack. Helper, a young tan male born to those same parents the year before, danced too. His silver sister, Hunter, joined them. How fine to have pups, they sung. How fine, too. No longer to be the youngest, the least in the pack. Bitter, the male, the mature male, pure white, came forward. What good news, King, he said, lowering his body and reaching up to nudge the leader's chin. A few moments later, however, when King and the two yearlings lifted their heads to sing the new pup's praise, Bitter, looked on and in silence. Once he, too, had been king, he'd had his own pack, his own pups to sing for, but that was before he had been disposed and driven out to hunt alone in the darkest part of winter. Now he waited, bidding his time, and another king's pups were not what he was waiting for. He turned from the celebration, The howl finished. 
King crawled once more into the den to check on his new family. Leader, sniffer, runner, thinker. That splendid pups. This time, though, he stopped. Puzzled. Halfway between the entrance and the room. What was that new smell? He strained to see in the deep dark of the den. The eyes of a wolf gathered in even the faintest rays of light, so he could just make out the four brown furry bundles lined up along their mother. They were nursing vigorously, in D, in, mm, intent on their first meal. See that, readers? Even adults, if it doesn't make sense, we have to go back and reread it. They were nursing vigorously, intent on their first meal. King's tail went into motion at the very sight of them, but Silver was busy with something more. A pup. She was washing another pup. This one, black like his father, black with a minute star on his chest. King's own chest swelled at the sight and he inched forward eagerly, a look-alike son. What name would he choose for this son who wore his black fur and white star? But Silver offered no name. She only went on licking. King scooted for forward farther to check his son himself. He sniffed the new pup from head to tail, tail to nose, and then drew back slowly. Something was wrong. The black pup was small, much too small, and he was not yet breathing. Runt, the name exploded from King. This one is Runt. The world, so let's think about that. Our job as readers was to be thinking about what we're reading. And our job was to think about what does the word Runt mean? So pause. Hmm. Do we have our answer there? Okay, keep it there. The world beyond the den was a good one, but it was hard. It was harsh. Only the strongest, the best, the most intelligent and competent survived in it. So we gotta pause there again. Think about it. You're a wolf, you're wild and you're outside. There's no house to protect you. Food isn't purchased from grocery stores for you. On cold, cold winter nights, the electricity doesn't kick on and warm your house up. You don't have extra blankets. So think about that if you're an animal. How hard it must be to live outside all the time. Okay, getting back to it. Only the strongest, the best, the most intelligent, the most competent survive it. And sometimes, not even then. Two of the pups in the last litter had died before they even got to come out of the den. Their mother had taken them, one at a time, off into the forest to bury them. Would she be doing the same again? Again, think about that. That definitely happens to animals. And it is a sad feeling, I know. It is a sad feeling in our hearts, but it's definitely the reality of what happens to animals in nature. At last, under Silver's persistent tongue, the black pup took a breath, then another. Air fill, filled his tiny lungs, just as it did his brothers and sisters, and his mother drew him gently toward her belly to begin to nurse. Only then did Silver acknowledge her mate and the name that had sprung from his lips. We may call him Runt for now, she said, laying her chin across the latest arrival. But who knows what gift he may bring to the pack? Who knows, King repeated softly, though he wasn't the mother's pup or the pup's mother. Oh, I have to go back. It's not making sense. Who knows? King repeated softly. 
Though wasn't the pup's mother supposed to know? She always had before. Maybe, he added, you have a better name. Silver was silent for a long time, because we have to think. Before, the mom had named them Sniffer because of the twitching nose, Thinker because of the thorough furrowed brow, Runner because of the long spindly legs, Leader because that pup came out first, and then the dad shouted, Runt. So, let's see. Silver was silent for a long time. No, she said at last. I know no other, not yet, which only confirmed King's fears. His son was marked for death. The puppy's father looked long and hard at his five offspring, especially this last. The one whose black fur and white star filled him with such love. Then, tail wagging more slowly this time, he backed towards the surface to carry this further news to the pack. Leader, sniffer, runner, thinker, four strong, healthy pups, and runt. Then there was runt. That is where our read aloud stops for today. So I want you to think about that. When we started the chapter, we thought about what does runt mean? Do we have a meaning for the word runt now? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Small. Tiny. Yeah. That is great. So when we thought about, did we think that runt was a good name? Like it makes your heart feel good? Or is it one of those things that you might get called that makes your heart feel yucky? Yeah. Yeah, those are all valid opinions. That's fantastic. So I want you to think about that as we continue to read this book. And this book will have sad parts. This book ha might have scary parts. But this book is a great book to get us really thinking deep and to get us hearing some fantastic words. All right, readers, I'll see you tomorrow.